This is an introduction to Racetronic's new dual in-tank hanger system that allows pumps uh, larger than your typical 255 and 340 lean hour pumps to be installed inside the tank. In the past, double pump systems were limited by the tank opening size. You could only install two 38 millimeter pumps, such as the 255s or 340s, through the opening. Uh, this system allows for two larger bodied pumps, like the Walbro 274, which is known in the industry as the 450, uh, or the Hellcat 285, uh, which is also known as the 525, to be installed um, in the tank. The modular design of this hanger allows each individual pump to be installed through the opening in stages and then everything locks in place quite easily uh, allowing it to be assembled from actually outside the tank. Um, the performance uh, is gra greatly improved because we have a custom six position bulkhead connector that's vapor proof it doesn't allow vapors to escape or fuel from the tank and the conductors feeding the pumps are 10 gauge wires uh, a separate ground and positive feed to each pump and also to prevent ground differential issues uh, from affecting the level sensor signal especially on late model digital dashes we have an independent ground and level sensor signal wire uh, coming out of the hangar as well. The ports are very large, especially for the feed. We have a 10 and ORB port, uh, which is substantially larger than a JIC port because the JIC ceiling surface takes up a lot of space because of the flare. Uh, in an ORB sense, you can see that it uses an an o-ring on the outside to seal so the inside diameter is considerably larger uh, and you can see it actually tapers down for a JIC. Um, the return is your standard dash 6 which we used in the past which is adequate for stage pumps and we also have a dash 4 ORB port for the tank venting. The vent has a custom uh, valve, one-way valve on the bottom that allows vapors to escape from the tank, but in the unfortunate situation the, vert the uh, vehicle were to flip over, the uh, check valve will block the fuel flow so it cannot drain out of the tank. Um, the pumps uh, each have their own individual mounts, as you can see here on this side. Pump 1 and pump 2. And all this bracketry interlocks and mounts on this stem, which acts as a return line. The stem locks into the billet head via what's called a crescent lock and seals via dual O-ring sealing system, as well as these custom fittings here, which are similar to what we refer to in the industry as uh, quick connects or disconnects with crescent locks. Uh, this design eliminates a lot of fiddling inside the tank and most of the components can be pre-assembled, dropped in, and then secured with simple hand tools from outside the tank. The Racetronics hanger, uh, when it's equipped with these Walbro 285 uh, or 525 pumps, otherwise known as the Hellcat pumps, uh, can support upwards of 1600 horsepower um, with the proper uh, lines in the car. Uh, typically for maximum performance we'd want to see a dash 10 PTFE feed line and a minimum dash 6 return line. Uh, the pumps are staged so that the secondary pump can be turned on either with a pressure switch controlled uh, by our wiring harness or if you have an aftermarket PCM that has a secondary output control for a pump, uh, you could use that as well. Uh, the output configuration of this can be handled in many different ways. 
right now you can see we have a dash 10 ORB to dash 10 JIC adapter, which people tend to slang in slang refer to as a J, uh, sorry, uh, AN fittings um, with a 37 degree flare. Um, this is a dash six adapter to go to dash six uh, JIC. And this is a dash four adapter for the vent line, which we include uh, with the hanger is standard because this line is typically factory uh, rubber hose. It doesn't have to be PTFE. It's just for vapors uh, and we include a dash for uh, JIC female uh, rubber push lock hose fitting on there. Um, if you currently own uh, a Racetronics B3 line kit uh, with the quick disconnect fittings on it, you can purchase the fittings that will convert it to quick connect and on our B3 kits and our old hangers the return line is a 5 16th 5 16th uh, quick disconnect or quick connect as they call it and the feed line to the motor is typically 3 8 uh, quick disconnect and this, this adapter here converts the dash 10 RB to the 3 8 and the dash 6 uh, to 5 16 quick connect. We will also have a, a version later on that will allow us to go from a dash 10 ORB to half inch quick disconnect. Before we can get started on the installation, we have to remove certain components. Uh, to make sure they don't get damaged during the installation process. Uh, the first thing you want to do is if you've actually screwed any fittings into this thing, you definitely want to remove them uh, because if you scratch the surface of the Quick Connects or the JIC, uh, it'll cause a leak. So, remove those. You'll also want to remove the intermediate pump harness, which connects the hanger to the double pump hot wire harness. And the way you do that, is you make sure this red lock is pulled out. You can see it slides back and forth, it's pulled out. You press down on the latch on the back side and slide it out. You'll also want to make careful note of the position of the pumps and the level sensor and the way it's rotated on the shaft relative to the discharge ports. It must be aligned in this fashion and the hoses must be rooted in these locations to prevent interference with the level sensor in the tank and also to make it easier to install. Before we get started with the disassembly of the hanger, we want to give a brief explanation as to why the positioning has to be the way it is. This is a factory tank with the plastic baffling. In Racetronic's opinion, it is still the best tank on the market uh, for this application. Uh, the other choice would be a Spectra second generation which has the updated baffling and there's a couple other brands on the market that may be considered as well. But if you have a factory tank and it can be salvaged, it's your best option. Uh, the position of the level sensor has to be towards the front of the car uh, and most of and the pumps have to be at the back side, side to side from left to right like this so that it doesn't uh, interfere or hang up on the baffling in the tank. And if you want to take a quick peek inside the factory tank for you that have not seen it before, you can see that towards the front of the tank, there is a lot of real estate for the level sensor to go up and down unimpeded. And then just below the hole in the tank, there is enough width for the filter socks and the pumps. And don't forget, under hard acceleration, all that fuel is going to go to the back of the baffling, and that's where you want the pickup socks, the filter socks, to be for the fuel pumps. We're going to walk through the disassembly of the double pump hanger uh, so that it can be installed in the tank in stages. Uh, but before we do that, we just want to make note of a couple of things. Uh, first off, when Racetronics uh, assembles and tests these, we set the height of the pump in the brackets 
so that they sit perfectly on the bottom of a factory tank. Uh, there should be no reason other than to replace a pump or if you have a non-standard tank that's not allowing the pumps to fully seat to adjust the height in these brackets. So in other words, do not remove or loosen the two screws on this side or this side of pump one or two unless 100% required. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to disassemble uh, and disconnect the fuel lines, the electrical, and the staged pump brackets. To remove the in-tank electrical connector from the bulkhead connector, you must press down on the latch on this connector while at the same time providing a subtle degree of uh, force to actually get it to slide out from the socket. So I'm pushing down with the screwdriver, small flat blade screwdriver, which pushes down on the lock and I'm gently prying it away in that location. You can see it just slid out from the bulkhead connector and then we're just going to sort of gently push that off to the side. The next thing we have to do is to loosen the extended crescent lock that's around the mounting slash return shaft on the hanger. And we use a 5 8 wrench and put that around the crescent lock to loosen it. And it will unscrew. You might want to also put some masking tape around here if you want to prevent scuffing. That's up to you. And then once the crescent lock is out, you can see that there's an, a cutout in the side that allows you to slide it on and off the shaft easily. Gently rotate the head back and forth and the shaft will slide out of the head. And you can see inside the head there are two O-rings that provide a seal for the return fuel going back to the tank. It's very important that on any of these sealing surfaces that you do not scratch anything because if you do, it'll cause leaks. And this is the area of the shaft that would be very sensitive to getting scratched. Also, you don't want to get any debris inside there uh, on the O-rings because again, it'll leak. The next thing you want to do is you want to remove the crescent locks from the quick disconnect fittings for the fuel tubes for the pumps. And again, these use a 5 8 wrench. There is a hex on top of the crescent locks and you simply put them on there and rotate them in this direction until they're loose. And then you can unscrew them by hand. And you can see that they also have a relief cut in the side and they will slide on and off the fittings. And again, you just want to gently pull those out. Same thing with this one. Remove the crescent lock. And remove the quick disconnect fitting. And these also use double o-ring seals that go into the discharge port for maximum flow. To prevent damage to the level sensor while we're working on this, it's probably a good idea to actually remove the arm. And it very simply clips in over here. And what you can do is you can take, again, a small flat blade screwdriver and then screw it from the side underneath the arm. Okay, be careful not to break the plastic clips. And it has to be in this position so the shaft can come out. You cannot remove the shaft if it's up in the up or down position because the metal doesn't have the relief here. That's it. The next part you want to remove is the screw holding the level sensor bracket onto the dowel pins. So we use a three millimeter Allen head wrench. And 
the level sensor bracket will just simply slide right off. You can see there's a locating dowel there, which helps reassemble it in the tank for locating purposes. And the, the area where the bracket sits is also keyed. And finally, the last stage here is you want to loosen the return mounting shaft which will allow you to separate the two pumps for assembly inside the tank. And for that, we need a 3-8 wrench, open-end wrench. You rotate it in this direction, here. And you can see it'll unthread from the brackets, like so. And you remove the shaft by sliding it down like that. And now you have two separate pumps and a bracket that you will install in the tank in sequence and then reassemble everything in the opposite order that we dismantled it. Okay, before you get started inserting the pumps into the tank, and assembling everything, we recommend that you put some sort of tape on the sharp edge of the opening of the tank to prevent you from cutting into the wires or the tubes during assembly and then once everything's dropped in the tank you can just simply peel it off. So the first thing we want to do is going to take a little bit of practice, a little bit of a puzzle, and there is limited space, is we got to drop pump number one, it says on the bracket, pump number one, into the tank onto the return shaft. So we'll put this through here, like so. Remember that the marking pump one's got to face towards the front of the tank or the front of the car. And we'll put that in through the hole. Be careful not to tear the filter sock or pull it off. Okay, and then we'll drop that down inside the tank. And once it's past the opening, that provides a little more clearance so that the second pump can be dropped down in the tank as well. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to take the second pump and get it past the opening. Okay, and you're going to have to play with this a little bit. It probably won't be the first time. And then get that pump slipped over to the shaft as well. And you'll know you have the pumps in the right position because the marking pump one and pump two will be facing towards the front of the tank and you'll also see the dowels start to line up. I don't know if you can see that there in the video. I'll try to move this out of the way for you here. See all that stuff going on there? And then what you do is you can lift this pump on top of the other bracket there and you'll see those two locating dowels lock into place. And then what I can do is I can start to rotate the shaft. Just going to get the right direction here. Don't drop the shaft in the tank. <laughs> okay. You can feel it tightening up. You want to rotate the shaft this direction here. So from the top side, it looks like it's counterclockwise. Okay. And then once you have that done, you'll notice that there is a hex on the shaft here and that's so you can put a wrench on it. This takes a little bit of practice. You can grab this whole assembly here. Sorry, I was going the wrong way. And you rotate it in this direction. You can hold the tops of the pumps. I'm holding them with my fingers here. And remember you know, this tape is definitely helping us here so we don't scuff these wires. We don't want any shorts. We just give it a, a good nudge there. Okay. And that's allowing the two brackets to stay together. Look at that. Isn't that amazing, guys? Now, the next thing you want to do, and this sometimes takes a bit of playing around with as well. Just give me one second here. next thing you want to do is put the level sensor arm back on the level sensor. This was the float. And you 
you can see it slides in like so and it just locks in place that's it make sure when you're working with these wires here they are fairly small and delicate so you don't want to keep bending them back and forth too many times because you could break them off and then you know you're gonna have to repair that um, as you can see uh, the level sensor bracket has special keying and it also has a dowel locator pin uh, on the pump brackets if you remember when you took this thing apart um, and before you even drop this in the tank one thing I will mention to you is the screw that we use to uh, secure this is stainless steel and it does not have magnetic properties um, so what I've found is that if you put a piece of tape on top of the tip of the four millimeter or sorry three millimeter um, hex wrench or allen wrench uh, it'll go a long way to actually holding it in place until you have it screwed in so you don't end up dropping it in the tank and having to fish it out so what we're going to do is we're going to use the fuel tubes or the bracket here i find holding the tubes keeps them out of the way actually and we can actually take the level sensor and drop it into the tank. I don't know if the camera can pick this up yet or not. And you will see. Sorry, just bear with me a second here. You will see the level sensor bracket. And you can raise it up a bit if you have to. I'll have to play with it a little bit. Get it in place. Some people prefer to put the arm on afterwards. That's that's an option as well. But then you'll need some long nose. Okay, as you can see, I have the level sensor bracket on the first dowel pin there, and all you have to do is rotate the bracket in place. You can see a little bit better there on the video over here the screw hole make sure it's lined up put the screw in the hole you don't want to strip anything okay so we have the uh, bracket located in the dowel pin you just want to make sure that the first few threads uh, on the screw feel like they're going in properly you don't want to cross any th thread anything and uh, just tighten it up. It always helps to have a second set of hands if uh, you got a buddy that can help you out, hold the wires and the tubes out of the way or something like that. Um, in any event, I'm just going to grab this here by the shaft so I can get a little bit more torque on that. You can see, you don't have to tighten it too, too much. And now, look at that guys, we have two pumps in the tank. We have the level sensor up near the front and you can see the float arm sort of over there in the front free and clear of all the baffling and now we're going to put the head back on the assembly okay the next step is to make sure you put the gasket on this area should be free and clear of all dirt and also, of course, while you're working on this, make sure you don't scuff and make holes in these nylon hoses or the wires. Always be careful of that. We'll take the tank gasket and put it in place. Some of them have a wire spine in them with these locator tabs. A lot of them now uh, just are a basic O-ring that sits in this uh, pocket around the... One thing I should remind you is not to forget to take the uh, tape off that you were using to protect around the uh, tank opening before you put the gasket back on. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, head of the hanger and put it on the return shaft. And once you've done that, it makes it a lot easier to hold everything in place without having to have a second person. And then you can plug in the electrical and the uh, fuel tubes. So uh, this cavity here is for the return port and that's where the shaft goes into and make sure the surface is clean you haven't scratched it and you don't get any dirt in the o-rings and we're just going to go like that it slips on very easy okay and then we're going to take this a crescent lock the extended one and slide it over the shaft and you don't want to drop this 
Okay, so once you get its thread started by hand, you can just snug it up ever so slightly. And now you have a way to hold on to the hanger and deal with the other aspects of the installation. The next thing I recommend you do is you take the electrical connector and you plug it into the bulkhead. You can see the lock is facing this way, which is away from here. And we go like this. And you hear it go click, and it locks in place. So after you have the electrical uh, connector plugged into the bulkhead, uh, we're going to plug in the uh, fittings for pump one and pump two to the head and what we'll first do here is we're going to loop it around this way and the, the support underneath is on the front. Always make sure that you haven't scratched this or any dirt on anything because you definitely don't want to compromise the seal and you just wiggle it around there on the first port and it just slides right in and then we can do the same thing on the other side So we'll have to, you know, persuade these tubes to sort of loop down and around like the, the way they were outside the tank, sort of relaxed. And that's why we're not tightening these up right away, because we want these to be able to swivel. Okay, so those are both in now. What we're going to do is take these crescent locks and put them in place. Uh, remember, don't drop these in the tank. We'll be fishing them out again. All right, you just slip it around there. It might take a little bit of doing to get them locked or started, the thread started. Just have patience. And then we're gonna put the second one on for pump number two. Great, and now you can see that the fuel tubes are sort of like in a position that they sort of feel comfortable and relaxed in. They, they sort of loop nicely down and around. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to tighten these crescent locks. And you don't have to use a lot of force. Remember the O-ring on the shaft is what makes the seal. This just holds it in place. We got our 5 8 wrench. You put it on the hex portion of the crescent lock. Make sure it's properly engaged. Take your time. You have to find the right spot sometimes. Uh, Especially if it's not a thin wall wrench, you might not want to, you know, find the sweet spot. But once you do, just give it a little nudge. Don't reef on it too much. Okay, we're going to do pump number two now. We're on the crescent lock. And you can see I'm just giving it ever so slightly. Get on that hex there so it seats nicely. You don't want to strip all this stuff up and make it all nasty. Okay, just give it a nudge. Now it's locked in place. Now the last thing you want to do is you want to tighten the crescent lock that's for the shaft that holds the pump in the tank. And the reason why we left that to last is because you want to make sure that the pumps are side to side in the tank, the level centers all the way forward, and the discharge ports line up with the relief in the tank. And I think we're pretty good. So you're going to need some light to double check this. Um, but I'm looking at the situation here right now. And I think we rotated it a little bit. So we're just going to play with it a little bit there. Okay. Going to double check the alignment. Make sure everything is good. And then once you're satisfied, you can grab the 5 8 wrench again, put it around the crescent lock for the uh, shaft here, and rotate it in this direction. Just give it a good nudge, like that. Not too much, it's aluminum. And just double check that nothing's moved. Now that we have the hanger installed and we replaced the lock ring, you'll notice that the locator tabs for the aluminum head should be in these channels here. You can see one here and one here. They should not be rotated elsewhere because 
that'll misalign everything inside the tank. The next thing we're going to do is put the fittings back in. Now, depending on the type of lines you have in your car, you can have a, a various adapter fittings to screw into this head. Um, most customers would probably have the Racetronics B3 line kits, and as I explained before, those are going to use 3 8 and 5 16 uh, quick connect adapters. The vent is always going to be a dash 4 ORB to dash 4 JIC, and we will supply um, a push lock dash 4 JIC female fitting to put on. Um, other people may have our old B2 line kits before we went to the quick uh, connect type. And in that case, you'll want to be using ORB to male JIC adapters. Uh, this one here is a dash 10. We're not going to be using that uh, for purpose of this discussion because that's going to be for an upcoming line upgrade. Uh, most customers with the B2 line kits will be using uh, dash 10 ORB to dash 8 JIC adapter for the feed and a dash 6 ORB uh, to dash 6 JIC male for the return. Um, this is a little bit smaller than port, however this is still way more flow than anybody would need for horsepowers well exceeding 1400. When installing the fittings, it's a lot easier if you start with the largest fitting and tighten it and work your way to the smallest fitting. Um, don't over tighten these. They rely on O-rings to seal, so just make them snug. You don't want to be stripping anything. Uh, if you want to keep your fittings looking nice and pretty, we recommend a set of aluminum uh, fitting wrenches. They prevent scuffing of the aluminum fittings.